And thank you for the invitation. Thank you, gentlemen, uh, for your uh, for your session. Um, so we're moving towards the, the final step in the value chain and looking at cannabis-based formulations for medical purposes. So what I would like to cover in the next couple of minutes really is just you know formulations and also from a clinician's perspective, um, how do we how do we make decisions um, on the type of product? Um, that we're going to use for, for patients. So my, I started off life as a, a professional life so as, as a clinician, as a medical doctor. Uh, at the moment, spending most of my time um, as a consultant within uh, the pharmaceutical and the, uh, the cannabis industry. So maybe just to take a step back and really consider for, for, for everybody out there, how do we, how do we make decisions um, on items that we, that we use? Um, or that we consume. Um, this is quite important um, in the sense that, you know, regardless if it's a motor vehicle or food um, or anything else, really, we always consider, um, you know, whether it's safe to consume, you know, we won't eat like a, a rotten apple as such. Um, and also, you know, are you going to get the, uh, are you going to get the benefit? Um, it's going to fill your tummy or will it give you the nutrition that you require? Um, and last but not least, number two there, it's another word for the quality of the product. So, um, you know, most principles that we, that we make uh, or that we use on a day-to-day -day basis is really what we should be applying to the cannabis that we, that we use as well. And also the cannabinoid-based uh, products that we use for, for patients um, or anybody else that we, um, that we propose it to. So the, the quality component really underwrites uh, not only uh, the, the efficacy or the, uh, of, the, of the product, but also the safety. Um, this is quite important because if we have inferior quality product, the product um, is likely to be uh, not safe uh, for, for patient uh, usage, but then also from an efficacy perspective, you might find that it might not contain um, the cannabinoid or the cannabinoid combination that we require for, uh, for the patient, uh, you know, for them to get better or to um, address the ailment that they suffer from. So, so quality assurance and control essentially underwrites is the foundation of both efficacy and safety. Um, and this applies to GACP, GMP, the quality management systems um, that we implement um, for cultivation, but also as Colin pointed out, um, also for extraction and then beyond um, in, the, in the lab as well. And, um, and why, why it's so important is that as a, as a clinician or as a person uh, that would like to utilize a cannabinoid-based product, we really want to make sure that when you use a product um, you know, from one batch to the next, or one, from one bottle to the next, that you are likely to get exactly the same um, outcome. Uh, when you uh, clinical outcome when you use that product. So it's, it's absolutely critical uh, from a quality perspective that we use high quality products um, and that the, uh, the product is both safe and efficacious uh, for usage. So um, from a clinician perspective, obviously when you uh, want to prescribe a product to a patient, you will weigh up the benefit of, of the product versus the risk. Um, and very kind of uh, just touched on you know the safety component of your cannabinoid based uh, product um, the you know, toxins the octotoxins the apotoxins ash uh, pesticides and so forth that needs to be allowed for that need to be tested for and those uh, standards are very important because obviously from a patient's perspective anything that you ingest or that you use you would like to fall um, within the uh, within the framework um, of, of safety but from a benefit perspective, um, we would like to use a product as a clinician or as a patient. It's important that you understand how you should be uh, formulating that product in order to reach the target. So the target might be skin, uh, the target might be brain, uh, the target might be the immune system. So it's cr absolutely critical that you give you a due consideration of use the correct product um, to address the correct um, element. So essentially what a formulation is really about um, kind of creating a final product that will achieve exactly that. Making sure that your active substance will reach the receptor or the organ um, or the system uh, that you would like to target. So it's all about combining an active substance um, with some other substances that ideally are non-active. Um, they usually are just bulking or carrying um, molecules. 
Um, and so in other words, from a, from, a, from a licensing perspective, you need to be sure that that product will actually reach the target based on the, on the way that you created the product. So the different routes of administration, um, and this is just a, a summary slide really, is of, as, we, as we are aware of smoking and uh, vaporization. So it's an inhalational way of addressing um, a, a clinical ailment. Um, sublingual as well, so in other words, um, just dripping a drop, for example, under your tongue and just keeping it there. It's a whole different route um, to the body and then actually swallowing the product. Uh, oral administration, which is well known um, and also uh, well utilized uh, for general ailments. Um, topical things uh, for any dermatological or skin conditions. And then lastly, but not least, depositories. Uh, for patients that can't swallow or that has uh, uh, difficulty in ingesting any, any products. So what is important um, when you have a patient in front of you is that you really consider them as a whole um, in a sense that there will be factors that you can modify um, and customize your product so that it actually achieves the ends that you would like to reach uh, from a clinical perspective. So we won't be able to change the patient. Um, in other words, you know, genetically we made up in a certain way, um, uh, age, and gender, and so forth. Um, however, um, if I can just if you just pass your eyes to the uh, to the green circle uh, behind you, the roots of administration is one of those modifiable um, aspects um, of treatment that you can you can you know consider different types um, or not only one type, but you can probably combine them as well, depending on what you would like to achieve. You can adjust the dose, um, up or down, um, and also decide you know, whether you would like to use a different um, cannabinoid profile in terms of the composition um, of, the, uh, of the product. Uh, then also, what is important is also to consider what the patient is on, other than uh, the product that you will be um, prescribing or um, that you'll be recommending to your patient. And why that is important is well, it's likely to have an effect on the way that the product is uh, broken down in the body. So um, just to try and keep inside our time frame, um, I'm just going to run um, into, the next, um, into the next slide. So what I've tried to do here is just maybe to give an example of, of you know, how the product um, effect will differ depending on whether it was given orally or whether it was inhaled. So, um, and I try to keep the diaphragm as you can slow. So, when you take a uh, new uh, smoke um, cannabis and you inhale it, um, it doesn't go through your liver, it actually enters your body immediately. It doesn't go through the liver, the liver doesn't have, have the opportunity to actually break it down into its active metabolites, so that those active substances that might cause an effect as well. However, uh, when you ingest the product, um, it will go through the liver, the liver will give it a bit of a rinse or once over and it will try and break it down and it will break it down. So what's important for the oral ingestion is that it will break it down into two psychoactive uh, metabolites, but the ratio will be different than the ratio that you will find with the inhalational product. And as a consequence, if you look at your inhaled product versus your ingested product, that the active metabolite that's more potent um, will predominate um, in the ingested product. And which means that uh, when you inhale, you probably won't get that um, high feeling, if I can call it that, uh, from your product. However, when you eat it, so for those of you that have used edibles, it's a slow onset, uh, but um, it has a much more powerful effect because of the higher percentage of active metabolites. Um, and that, that can be seen in the, in the graph here as well. So the gray area depicts the inhale, so quicker onset of action or quicker availability to the body. Um, but it takes us off within five hours or so. However, um, when you ingest your product and you take it orally, um, it's got a slow onset of action, but it's got an extremely long tail. It will last for hours. Um, and that's where some patients run into trouble uh, for a rookie mistake 101. You don't feel it yet, so you take another um, edible in order to, um, you know, to, to top up. But that, um, you know, can lead you into, into trouble. So if was, just in summary, and I'm, gonna, I'm just going to stop here. So what I'm trying to do is just going to give you a bit of an overview of, of, of products. You know, how do, we, how do we decide which products to use for our patients? 
um, and also the different formulations available. And then lastly, just an example of you know the same product, but even in, in a two different ways or two different um, formulations, and what the actual end clinical effect might be for the patient based on the uh, based on the physiological route that it took. Um, and then last but not least is that um, I think um, if I can you know probably the most important message is that the, the quality of your product will really keep you safe. Uh, but we also make sure that you get the full benefits uh, of the product that you uh, that you choose. Um, thank you. Thank you.